let's welcome my colleague uh, Shi Wan Shu. He's from Tetrate, and he's from do you from India? He's from India, and uh, let's get started. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning and uh, welcome to the session. So today I will be covering about how to extend and customize Istio using Wasm plugins. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So uh, we'll have a basic introduction of how Wasm plugin works in Istio. And then we'll see the internals of Wasm plugins, how they interact with the uh, Envoy. Uh, this is required so that we can create uh, uh, advanced use cases like uh, dynamically debug requests on the fly, uh, implement application firewall use cases uh, in Envoy uh, using Istio, uh, enforcing network policies, and some advanced routing features that we can have uh, in Envoy using the WASA plugins. And we'll have a short demo uh, to see things in action. So first of all, what are WASA plugins? Um, so if you go by the definition, they are they're like they provide a uh, mechanism to extend uh, the functionalities of Envoy. Uh, in our case, it's Istio proxy through WebAssembly filters. And uh, so how exactly it's done? Let's, uh, we need to understand the high-level architecture of Envoy. So we have listeners, filters, routes, clusters, and endpoints. What Wasm plugins do, they, they add a new filter in the filter chain. Uh, so for example, if I have multiple filters in my Envoy, I can uh, extend a new filter uh, using a Wasm plugin and create a new filter. So under, under the hood, what happens is uh, using Envoy native APIs, uh, uh, I create a new Wasm plugin. That Wasm plugin is interacting with the Wasm uh, runtime, which is embedded in Envoy, and it's creating a new filter. But more fundamentally, there are multiple ways to create filters. Uh, so there are three types on a high level through which we can create uh, uh, filters in Envoy. One is using native C++ filters. In that, what we do, we create, uh, a f in, in a fork of Envoy, we just uh, write our filters in the native C++ and then recompile in Envoy and uh, use that new Envoy binary in a, and create a S2 proxy out of it. But this is hard. Another way that we can do is we can create uh, Lua scripts and uh, this is this is nice. We can have our Lua script doing the function, but the problem is we need to write the Lua code, and it's a bit hard to maintain. So this is how a Lua script would look like. Uh, we'd have we we need to define the complete source code in the in the YAML itself. This is like a high level how it looks like. And uh, the other uh, method, which is quite simpler, is uh, creating a new Wasm extension. In that, we need to program whatever functionality that we want using the Wasm uh, native APIs uh, from the Envoy. And then using uh, whatever uh, language you want to use, maybe Go or, uh, or C++, you can create the Wasm extension and can create a Wasm plugin out of it. So this is how a Wasm plugin in Istio looks like. You need to define uh, the VM configs, plugin configs, and uh, the URL of your Wasm plugin, it could be an OCI image, or you can directly define the Wasm model path. So basically, these three methods we can use to create the Wasm plugin. And we'll be talking about how to use Wasm extensions to achieve uh, advanced routing features and network policies. So how it works. So we'll see internally what is happening when uh, we are creating these filters using Wasm plugins in NOI. So fundamentally, we are using Envoy's, Envoy AP, uh, APIs and creating a, a Wasm extensions uh, using extensions.wasm API uh, available in Envoy. And by default, Envoy uses a V8 as a virtual machine to create the Wasm runtime uh, environment for you. You can uh, change that Wasm runtime uh, of, of your choice. By default, it's V8, but uh, we can use V8, VMR, VVM and Wasm time, which are available in Envoy, and then we can recompile Envoy and Istio to create a Wasm uh, to create a new uh, Istio proxy based on your uh, Wasm time runtime. But by default, it's weird, so we'll be talking about weird. And Envoy operates on a multi-threaded model. What does it mean? Is uh, 
the main thread is taking the responsibility of running all the global tasks. And uh, in, the, in, the, in the individual threads, uh, it creates the individual wasm, uh, individual wasm, wasm VM, which is running for every request. So for example, if there are multiple S2E streams, there will be multiple worker threads, and then there will be multiple wasm uh, VMs created. And those are separate VMs. They have their separate user space and everything. Um, but if we want, we can have a single VM uh, which is serving multiple requests. And that is required for if you want to share context between different uh, requests. So for example, you want to share, uh, so for, for an incoming request, you want to share something that with another uh, request. You may want to use th the concept called shared data. In that, what you want to do is, so for example, in this uh, first VM, which is, it has VM ID foo, and the uh, wasm module is hello.wasm, and in another VM we have uh, VM ID foo, again, th this is the same VM ID as of uh, hello.wasm, and it's by.wasm. So the idea is to, I want to share the context between these two different requests and these two different VMs. I can do that by having a shared data, uh, and the shared data is, uh, like it, it knows b because the VM ID is common in between uh, uh, these two different VMs, and these two different uh, VMs running for different threads. And using the shared data, I can uh, share the context between these two different VMs, and th that's useful if you want to have uh, like complex routing schemes, which we'll talk about in a moment. So let's talk about uh, some use cases. One use case could be you want to dynamically debug your request on the fly. So in that case, if you are uh, debugging, you, want, you, you maybe want to see some STB headers. What are the headers in your request in the, the, the given moment? Uh, maybe the STB body, the remote address, uh, header injection, and you may want to inject some header in the request itself or maybe in the response. Basically, you are doing header manipulation. And if you want to do header propagation, in that case, you may want to use uh, something like this. So in the header propagation, the idea is without instrumentation, you are propagating the header from the inbound to the outbound request. So if, if the application is instrumented, uh, the header can be propagated easily. But if the application is not instrumented, in that case, what you want to do is uh, you want to create two different threads, uh, two different uh, VMs sharing the same VM ID, and then using the shared data, uh, what you can do is uh, you can save that particular uh, header in the shared data and then use that information based on the request ID uh, to propagate the header. But, it's, it, but there are issues in the scale, but for a small scale, it, it, it may work. So that's why there's a star. This in, th in theory, it's, it's possible, but uh, via shared key value uh, store, there are multiple caveats involved, uh, and it needs to be taken care of um, in, in the production. Uh, so let's talk about some of the use cases. So one use case could be you want to have a WAF, uh, application firewall in your uh, infrastructure. And uh, so the, one of the most famous is OWASP core rule set. Um, so basically what it does is you can have SQL injection, threat uh, protection against SQL injection, cross-site scraping, and uh, multiple others uh, attacks, some common attacks. So to mitigate all this uh, attacks, you can have a WAF implementation. And one way to do it uh, using uh, implementing your own WASM plugin, uh, which is extending uh, NY APIs, and then you are uh, programming your own uh, firewall. Another way is to, like, you can use some open source projects. So for example, Coraza proxy wasm, it does that for you. What it does is it extends the proxy wasm API specifications and uh, embeds the WAF uh, functionalities in the Coraza project. And then you can just create a wasm plugin and it would work just out of the box in your uh, infrastructure. Another way is to, uh, like another use case would be having a network policies uh, in place in your infrastructure. So Istio NY filter can be configured using uh, the authorization filter to delegate uh, authorization decision to OPA. So uh, 
native ways to use the network policies available in Kubernetes and Istio itself. Another way is to, you can use open policy agent and uh, extend the functionalities available in open policy agent and use that in Istio. For that, you need to uh, configure Envoy to use open policy agent as a network uh, policy provider. So you, you need to install OP Envoy and uh, then we, we need to create a sophisticated WASM plugin, which would delegate the authorization to OPA. And what we can do is, if, if the uh, network policies available in open policy, policy agents are not uh, enough, we can create a new, uh, like, so OPA uses uh, rego policies. We can create our own WASM plugin uh, to enhance what, what is available in OPA policy agent itself. And we can uh, like define our own network policies on top of it uh, using the WASM support in OPA. And then that OPA can use to be configure the network policies in Istio itself. Um, so there are some references. Now, uh, how would I uh, do some advanced routing uh, in Istio using WASM? So consider a use case uh, where depending on the header value, you may want to hit a specific subset of a surface. So for example, if the initial header is V1, and so if, if there are multiple services running, and I give the initial header at my ingress gateway as V1, I want all the subsequent requests to go to uh, V1 itself. Or I can define, predefine a request flow. If I want, uh, so for example, if I define a flow alpha, where the first service A uses V1 subset, the nether service B uses V2 subset, and then V3 and V2 for uh, service C and service D. So here I'm defining a request flow, uh, and I'm giving it, it a name as alpha, and when, whenever I give the request header as alpha in my ingress gateway, this path should be followed. Similarly for beta. So this is, this is a bit complex, and we cannot do this by configuring virtual service uh, in Istio. If you want to do that, we, we, need want to, we need to hard code virtual service all the time. But if we want to do this dynamically, there we need to use WASM plugins. So one easy way is to use uh, instrumentation. If your application is instrumented, uh, you can have uh, uh, virtual service created depending on whatever the request flow is. So for example, in, in alpha, uh, alpha flow, I can create a virtual service uh, which would Im instrument so, so if the application instrument instrumented, the my header is propagated throughout the request chain. I can use uh, this propagated header and then create a virtual service out of it, which would do a header match for v1, and then v1, if 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 the header is alpha, the request would be routed to v1. If the header is uh, beta, the request would be routed to v2. But if I want, if if my application is not instrumented, what I can do is I can have a WASM plugin which would use the knowledge of shared data between different PMs, and it can do the job, but uh, at the moment, it's not very efficient. So let's see how it works uh, when we use the WASM plugin. So I'm not sure if it's uh, visible, but uh, let's try to understand. So this is the ingress gateway, and uh, this is the inbound request coming from, uh, from the user, and the user is defining the custom header as alpha. So when the request with alpha header comes in, uh, the ingress gateway just propagates the header, and uh, this is product v1. Now, here we know, know that for the incoming request, uh, I have this service index created, which is zero, and for the outbound request from product v1, the header is not propagated, so what I'm doing here is I'm sharing the context between the VM available here and the VM available here. And use, using the shared data, I'm using the request ID itself to first store the header uh, alpha in the VM available in this request path, and then reuse that alpha uh, to know what the request ID is. And corresponding to the request ID, I'm calculating my service subset, which is V2, if the request is alpha. And then based on that uh, service subset, I'm just routing using my virtual service to the next subsequent request. 
Similarly here, uh, the custom header is again injected uh, at, the, at, at the response header. And then the response header alpha is using the service index one. And again, the same thing is happening where uh, depending on the custom header alpha, I'm storing request ID and uh, this particular header. And then at the response, I'm using that uh, uh, ID, uh, request ID using the sh context sharing between different PMs, I'm recalculating what is my service subset. In, in this case, it's V3. And then I'm again routing using my virtual services. So this is kind of a high level flow and how it works. So let's take a look at a demo. Second, trying to connect. So in my cluster, Um, so this is a single cluster setup where I have book info running uh, in the default name space and it's still set up. Now what I want to do is uh, I want to demo uh, this setup where uh, I'm using this particular WASM plugin configuration uh, using proxy WASM SDK. So what I'm doing is I'm just injecting few headers in my response header where if you can see in this particular line 123 we have uh, proxy wasm go SDK example injected uh, with, with value as HTTP headers and uh, I'm printing all the response headers uh, available in my response. So this is how the response would look like. I would have all the request and response headers printed uh, if I run this thing. But for some reason, this uh, is not working due to the VPN, so I'm just <laughs> pasting the output here. Um, yeah. Similarly, if uh, we, we embed uh, the knowledge of uh, sharing VM, uh, sharing, uh, sharing information bef be between different VMs using the shared data, we can have uh, different uh, routing schemes available, uh, just like we talked about now. So, yeah, I mean, this is it for the short talk. Uh, any questions are welcome. Uh, yeah, I have a question about the uh, way I'm uh, sharing data storage in the, uh, in some, somewhere, yeah. You know, the, uh, if, uh, if the VM have the same uh, VM ID, then the data will be stored in the same uh, shared, sh uh, shared shedding, yeah. So uh, can you uh, give more details about the uh, uh, data storages? Uh, it's volume or something, uh, anything where, yeah. Use, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, the shared data thing works in, so in, in the proxy wasm SDK. If you are using the shared data, it means that you can have your own data store or there's one cache that is available. So, uh, so that's available in the reference itself, uh, this one. So the idea here is uh, like if there are thousand requests at the same time, they would have their own uh, VM in, in the individual threads. So every thread would have its own VM and for inbound and outbound request, there is no uh, knowledge sharing, there is no context, context sharing. But if what if I want to, depending on the response, uh, request header, I want to share that information with the outbound request. I need to have some mechanism to share the data between these two uh, requests. So that's where the shared data comes into picture. Okay, so another question is about the expiration of the data. You know, uh, there are so many data in this sharing data storage. 
But uh, how about if there is a uh, rotation or exploration uh, management for the, all this data? Yeah, so this thing is under development. So that's why it's not production ready. Uh, I, if I get your question correctly, what would happen if around after a million requests, how would I clean up my data store for, uh, for the given request IDs? If it's, that's your question. So I mean, you can have your own cron job set up to do that. Uh, but yeah. Currently, it's, uh, it's not been taken care of. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Hi, Oma. Thank you for your Thank you. excellent speech.